meet you, your Billy Punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it. So, Kyrie, yeah, the earth is flat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, whatever. The earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> Wherever you are, make it, make it T T T Truth Frequency Radio. Casting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is in a spaceship anchored over the Midwest breadbasket. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you're not very good at computers, and Kathy Dunson is calling already. Hang on, let's see if I can add her to the group call without actually destroying this whole thing. Kathy, are you there? Kathy. What? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Hey, Kathy, mute your microphone for a second. I haven't even gotten through the announcements yet. I know. Okay, bye. Well, no, don't, not, not bye. Just mute your microphone. Done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, for those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if it is not September 19th, 2017, then you're listening to a rerun or a reproduction or some sort of copy. Either way, if you try to call into the show, you'll probably get my voicemail. You won't be able to talk to me live, which is that just happens. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery is be hesitant in accepting the claims of those who speak in the name of science. One must determine first whether that science is indeed the master or merely the tool of self-interest, self-aggrandizement, or political agenda. And that was by Dr. Adele Dreimer, who I do not know, but I'm sure the peanut gallery will clue me on on who that person is. A couple of things before we pick up Kathy Dunson, because I'm sure she's going to be talking about the big money challenge, not necessarily the Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge, which is just gathering multiple layers of dust. Uh, but let me talk about the, the Flat Earth Conference real quick. If you are not on the waiting list, you might not want to try because they're running out of tickets. As of right now, right as we speak, there are seven general admission tickets left for the conference. And that's uh, apparently the conference organizers have squeezed every last square foot out of that room and they did what they could. So there are seven general admission tickets left. Go to fe2017.com. To find them, if you cannot find them, email me 
and I will send you the direct link. I, I can read you the direct link. It's actually eventbrite, B-R-I-T-E dot com slash E slash F-E-I-C 17 slash extra tickets slash tickets, blah, blah, blah. But there are seven left, and if those are sold out, fire off an email to me, and I will do what I can. Uh, you know, because there's a few people out there, you know, statistics say that there's some people that something happened, like family emergencies or just their schedule conflict. They bought the ticket six months ago, like anything, and they they can't go. And so I've been in touch with several people that cannot go. So if the tickets run out on the website, let me know, and I will see if I can connect you with those people. All right. Other than that, you're going to have to sign up for live streaming or Go, have some fun. It was going to be a party. So go down there and you don't even have, need a ticket. Just get a hotel room somewhere and then hang out with us at the Embassy Suites and have a good time. Uh, one more quick thing, which is uh, DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, is doing a billboard that's going up near the conference center. The GoFundMe is called A Stranger's Guide to FE Billboard. It's going to run September, October, and November near the conference. I'm sure it's going to be a big deal. All right. That in mind, let's bring on real quick. She's not a guest on the show, so don't get all excited or anything. Although she's popping her microphone, and that's a rookie mistake, and you hate to see it. Kathy, are you there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all well, right, Kathy. What? I what? Have, I have my own you know, little routine when we do our show on Thursday night on TFR yeah. at eight o'clock or no, is it, it's nine o'clock. It's late. You're later. But anyway, <laughs> shameless plug by Kathy Dunson, <laughs> but, but yes, do go on. That's all right. Okay. And I have a quote for the peanut gallery and actually for Ms. Patricia. Why does everybody have a free? All right. What's your quote for the peanut gallery? See, I didn't think the whole quotes thing was going to be catching on, but apparently anyone that comes on now wants to give the peanut gallery a quote. And then, in, uh, I, you're ready for my question? Yep, do it. In, in ancient times, cats were worshipped as gods, and they have not forgotten this. That is from <laughs> Terry Pratchett, and most all of us know that anyway, especially cats. Anyone that owns a cat, yes, knows that one. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I never do catch the show live because I'm uh, I'm not one that stays up very late, or I say that, but I do. I stay up all the time because... Um, I'm, I'm watching, um, all the flat earth videos that I can't normally late at night, like globe busters and especially John the Morgyle. I love to go to sleep watching John the Morgyle. That just okay. really, it really works for me. John, if you're out is, there, please email me back. I want you is, on the show. Is that why the nickname was out there? The Snorgyle? Or no, is it I hadn't heard that. But yeah. Sure. I, I have heard that from a few people, but I didn't know if it was because they, they can fall asleep listening to him or if it was something derogatory. I wasn't sure. It's peaceful. It's very peaceful. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I have a comeback quote from the peanut gallery, which is, facts are not science, as the dictionary is not literature. And that is from Martin Fisher. Very nice. Like yeah, he has some good it, ones every once in a while. It works. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a real quote person, so I, I love to catch the quotes. So um, tell me, because uh, you're on because you want to clarify something about the big money challenge. Kind True? of add to, uh, I don't get many uh, contacts from that. I'm always hoping and, you know, I check through my spam box and, and all of that just to be sure. But every once in a while I do, and I, I had a real goodie recently, and so Zen updated <laughs> some of the details for that just to kind of clarify. You know, we want experiments instead of conversations. Most people tend to want to start conversations back and forth. and Yeah, which is not going to go anywhere. Browbeating and saying, give me the money. That's yeah. basically what it's I like think it's a global <laughs> pay up. You might as well be in the, in the schoolyard. And no, send I'm... a picture, and that's it, you know. And oh. right. Anyway, so we've clarified that some. And also, I wanted to mention that the way we originally designed it was to set up a, a trust account, which has been done, and so that we can hold the funds separate. 
and be able to, you know, show media, especially that we're close to the conference now, that this is legit. We really mean this. And there were a lot of people initially when we announced this, when you came on this show with us, Mark, and they were very interested in contributing to that so we could bump that um, amount up. And you have mentioned, you know, like 20 and upwards of $25,000. And even Hori Sheet Show had it on that I was the one that was, <laughs> I mean, that really Oh, cried. I'm sure the grapevine <laughs> took over on this one where, you know, before long, the media you know, whoever it is in the media is going to report a ridiculous one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, yeah, that Kathy Dunson's going to pay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, I know a lot of people were interested, and um, I'm so I'd be ready to um, receive funds for that now that we could put directly into that account. So I, I have, you know, a lot of people's addresses. I'm going to go ahead and, and let you know about that. But I just wanted to kind of make that official and also to let you know we're going to continue to promote this now, especially coming up to the conference. Let Got media it. know. And Mark, you know, you have continued to announce it. There's some other people that had, you know, kind of a big chunk of change that they had kind of like a, a co-challenge going with us. And I was, you know, uh, letting people know about that. So I just want to let people know who were interested in applying for that. You've got to prove curvature you know, really, and you've got to prove that the earth is moving, really. And uh, there are, you know, experiments. Uh, one was uh, Michelson Morley and uh, Michelson, wasn't it Michelson, who was a Nobel uh, Prize winner. And right. they right. they weren't setting out to uh, prove that the earth was flat or didn't move. Or, no, they were just trying to, they were. They were trying to prove how much it did, you know. Yeah, they, they were trying to prove the ether along with the, yes. the ether wind, which we would actually kind of call the solar wind now, but they were calling it like a generic ether wind that the earth was traveling through space. And yeah, the combination of Michelson Morley and Aries failure. Aries failure, yes. Which which is great because Aries failure was, I still quote to this day, which he said, either I failed, which he, he says that he did, or the earth isn't moving, one of the two. And it's like, well, and, and he admitted that he failed because we all know that the earth is moving, right? Which I feel bad because if he was still alive, I mean, the whole Flatters community would be all over this guy saying, dude, you didn't you didn't fail. Yeah. You, the earth actually wasn't moving. Yeah. You just, yeah. Anyway. I have seen a documentary where they um, actually presented that and they showed uh, the video that um, some people have used in different Flat Earth videos that shows a, a simulation of that experiment. But they completely turned it around and said, we can't know what was in their minds when they did this. <laughs> But, right. you know, it's just a uh, deception and they don't teach it in school. So yeah. anyway, that's the kind of experiment that we're looking for sure. that would show us we're all wrong. The thing that we've been waiting to find out since Mark put out Flat Earth Clues. Oh, that's awfully nice. <laughs> and yeah. and to be to be honest, look, you know, anyone wants to, to pony up and, and be on the line for this thing, I highly encourage it because... As you know, I, when I did that debate with Brian Dunning, oh, geez, it was last year, I think. He he, even though he is a fraud, and and I don't like him because he went to prison for fraud. Yeah. He, he still he still had an excellent point, which is that he goes as a scientist. He goes, you're never going to be able to prove it from the ground. It can never happen. You cannot prove. And which which was an interesting. He didn't even go through different different. You know, he didn't hum and ha about it. He goes, he just paused and he says, yeah, you can't do it from the ground. There's no way. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson was the, one of the first people to say that you will never, civilians will never be able to get up high enough to prove the curvature. And so, yeah, which is why we've gone so long, which is why the Jeffrey Grupp challenge is, is gathering uh, dust. Yeah. Speaking of Jeffrey, we yeah. finally arranged uh, to have him on a show, uh, Zen and I, uh, the next two, wait, two Fridays upcoming, we're going to record and upload to video. We've been yeah. wanting to do that. He hasn't done anything in quite some time, and I think he's become ordained since you last spoke to him. You know oh, really? how he is. He's always busy, yeah, you know, getting is, another degree. Or... <laughs> he is literally the biggest brain, oh. phys physically the biggest brain in Flat Earth. He always yeah. has been. So and that'll be coming. He's, I don't know if he fantastic. has to put out any more Flat Earth stuff at the moment because he's done, you know, look, you know how it comes. Everybody does things in waves. And he he's done, already gone above and beyond. But yeah, it'd be nice to hear from him again. Yeah, looking forward to that. 
But yeah. anyway, well, I wanted to thank you for the chance to come on. And anybody who's interested, um, either to um, increase the amount that we're putting out there, because we really want to show them that we're serious about this, and we know they can't do it. So yeah. you'll get your money back, and uh, we're gonna just you know do this till the conference comes, unless you want to continue. Because Zen has already opened this account with five thousand from our publishing company. Nice. Um, and he's just going to leave it out there as a perpetual challenge. Sure, and why not? Yeah. Why not? So yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think any, I don't think anything is going to happen of it, but it's a great little little hook to put out there. It's a great yeah. little tidbit of of, uh, of bait. Yeah, uh, and my email address is Perelandra P E R E L A N D R A seven seven at gmail dot com. That comes from C S Lewis. Space trilogy and right. Perilandra was the planet Venus. Cool. That. You should probably you should probably give out your nine hundred number too, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, no, I mean you have one of those, right? Just no, one, of those, I don't. one of those like those electric blue type things. No, I don't. No? Yeah. Uh, and, well, and the challenge information is on <laughs> sacred. Jeez, yeah, lunch. now I'm talking about our. <laughs> publishing company no it's okay you know i i look i wouldn't be we embarrassed so, yeah, christian so, literature <laughs> hey, christian literature yeah i know that's your day job and then you yeah. have whatever it is i mean i know you have an alias so you don't go Thanks. by cat it's something else like anastasia i put on my red wig <laughs> red wig <laughs> Uh, well i like red too but anyway i'm not that blonde now thank you (laughs) (laughs) Uh, sacred word publishing dot net and the details for the challenge are there all right and it's do this more often mark (laughs) no i it's it's good that that you only got half flustered yeah well anyway it's my bedtime now so (laughs) see you're gonna go there that's that's okay okay all right uh anything else before we send you off into no, i'm no? good all right good. hey and i can't wait to see you you're gonna you're going to the conference of course absolutely we're gonna be uh selling books we decided we're going to rent a uh, a small moving van <laughs> so because the the gal that's our other co-host laurel austin oh i just have to say this <laughs> What? She brings so much stuff with her. She lives in Kansas City, and we went to Zins for the Atlanta conference for the debate. And we had a car full of food and water and, uh, you know, Herbalife and uh, clothes and camera and her computer. She brought her entire computer. It was just an amazing thing for me to see this. <laughs> so I suggested, let's just get a moving van and then we'll bring all the books. And we've got these huge posters of the Gleason map and our different book covers and all kinds of fun things. And so we're going to so bring a lot of stuff. And, and Jen said we didn't need a room. We could just sleep in the in the moving van. So. What? <laughs> you're, not, you're not actually going to sleep in the moving van. No, but he did suggest say. that he's kind well, of a no, funny guy. That that is kind of funny because well, I mean, no, there's there's people. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a woman from England who already prepaid for her hotel down the street. So uh, she's. Oh, gonna... we could we could lease out some of the moving van. You could. I don't know if it's going to get that nuts. Although it might. <laughs> you never know. It could turn into like a weird Woodstock thing where. Yeah. You know, uh, I've got a funny feeling that the the, the police are going to get called a few times. So gather under D R I T R H is billboard. You know. <laughs> nice. All right. Sing alongs. <laughs> or the sing alongs. Oh, hey, I got calls coming in. I got to go. Okay. So, Thank you, Mark. Nice, nice talking for me. And if you want, call in next week, and we'll and and you know I'll just have you call in every once in a while during the the during the opening. Until yeah, okay, okay, yeah. keep it flat. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye bye. All right, uh, phone number to call in, and I know I've got some calls out here, Beverly Hills, North Carolina. I'll pick those up in a second. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111, or the backup number is 213-233-3998. And the UK number is, oh boy, 44.203.393.2871. I don't know if there's, and if you want to call and just listen, and this is for D Marble and some of the other people, if you just want to call and listen on your phone, it is 641 793 7117. 
if I, there are any more numbers, I'm just going to ignore them at the moment. All right, let's pick up Beverly Hills, California. Here we go. Beverly Hills, you're on the line with Strange World. What's going on? Hey, Mark, it's Andy. You remember me? I, well, you know, I don't get a lot of calls from Beverly Hills, so yes, I do. <laughs> I know, right? You remember me. I'm the one who always talks and brings up, you know, the whole uh, Copernicus and God and how that whole thing, you know, uh, played out. Right. Um, right. Can you hear me? And hear you. Can you can okay, you hear me? Cool. Yep, sure can. This is when I recommend people to hey, grab have, their headphones. But anyway, go ahead. What do you got? You, you didn't have you didn't have a show last week, did you? No, I didn't. I was in Houston with Patricia Steer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and you guys walked around the place and stuff? We walked, yeah, we walked around NASA and shot a whole bunch of footage. I suppose, I, in a pinch, I suppose that night I could have done it from her laptop. But, you know, I, it was a long day anyway. I figured people would forgive me. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I thought I missed the show or something. Nope. I'm glad I didn't. Nope. I don't miss a lot of, of shows, but going down to NASA was totally worth it. Yeah, because we got a lot to talk about. I got my buddy... Sorry, you faded out there for a second. And it's now Ross. Can... The what? Can you hear me? It's Ross. And Ross. Hey, how Ross. are you? I am good. How are you? Yeah. Oh, that's, he handed the phone Dude. to you. That's that's what happened. No, well, we're, we're we're kind of on a three way type thing. Oh boy, is it going to get that sort of weird tonight? <laughs> that's fine. That's we got two trucks. I'm not judging <laughs> all God's children. What's um? What what, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> well. I got a quick question for you. I was kind of thinking about the simulation model right. and <clears throat> basically that like, I was wondering if the moon and the sun could possibly be some type of transformer that was projecting onto a 2d model, creating the 3d reality. Is that been a possibility? Li- been listening to a little bit of Eric Dollard. Have we D O L L A O D. A uh, very intriguing man, and yeah, the first time I ever heard him talk out of his car, which <laughs> apparently he uses out as a lounge chair, uh, it was it gave me it gave me chills because the way he was I, talking, it was he it was there wasn't just conviction. It was like, oh yeah, it's not just him. It's like a lot of people know this, but they're not going to talk. I know. About I it. saw that too. I, I I was freaking out when he said that. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest because if the sun is just a light bulb, you know, if it's just a directional like a spotlight, then it's going to have it get its power from something else, which is why he would well, say insane. that there's no there's no fusion happening in the sun because there doesn't have to be. It's just a light source, and the power is he now he used some flowery terms, but it's like look the 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 power the light is coming from somewhere else, the energy is coming from somewhere else. It's just a it's just a transformer, and I thought that was brilliant. Because he didn't know, he's still he's still not a flat earther. But the stuff he was saying <laughs> was going along, you know, with our model. Because yeah, if you're listening to to his stuff and you're thinking uh, heliocentric global solar system stuff, it's like yeah, it's kind of interesting. But when you listen to it, yeah, from a flat, yeah, flat point of view, it makes way more sense. Exactly, exactly. That's what was kind of getting me. I was thinking like, oh my god, and like you know, the mainstream simulation idea you know i mean it's 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 really there i mean at least it seems like it's there from you know like sacred geometry and all these types of things so sure. you know i definitely think like maybe the moon has something to do with it you know as well it has its own light source you know I don't oh know. yeah yeah no i i totally believe that the the, the sun is its own light source I, and and the moon is its own light source it it's when you look, yeah, yeah, at the yeah. te- the moon. look at the temperature variations again anyone who's listening to this for the first time Look up uh, flat Earth moon temperature. It is a fascinating subject where the moon is just a big night light, and it's generating its own light, and it's a cooling light, and we can do it now. Uh, in universities, it's called a cool laser. So, yeah, good good stuff. What else? I mean, uh, what else? I have, a, I have a question real quick. Yeah. This is Andy. Um, uh are we sure that eight inches per mile squared is definitely the equation for finding the curvature? Are we sure of that? I, like, be- I can actually bring that I up hundred percent. It's, it's, it's mainstream's number. We didn't come up with it. We didn't, we didn't invent it or even reinvent it. No, no, it's not, it's not apply. perfect. It's not perfect. Meaning it's eight inches, give or take, 
And so for the first couple hundred miles, yeah, you can pretty much bank on eight inches per mile square again. But then you got to then you're going to have once you get over a certain number, you get to start factoring in trig because somebody called me out on that like six months ago and said that, hey, when you get up over a thousand miles, eight inches per mile, this just doesn't, doesn't you it's it's you have to you have to fudge the numbers a little bit after that. But for the most and, part, and, yes. And how about how do you OK, how do you factor in how high the observer is, though? How does that work? Yeah, that you're gonna have to go online and and look up a calculator. Look up like Earth curve calculator. Oh, wait, wait. Okay. So on the Earth curve calculator, do they factor in the height of the observer for you? Yeah, yeah. You can put in both. So it, it's some some okay. have it, some okay. don't. So some will say, okay, how far is the object away from you? And some will say, how far is the object? And how high is the camera? Or how high is the eyeball? So right. is the Earth curve calculator a mainstream tool that was put out even before flat Earth became oh, yeah. really, yeah, yeah, yeah. really big? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's been there. So that, how old is it? That's their own thing. It's, it's been there for years and years. Um, as a matter of fact, if you want to have fun and I got about two more minutes with you guys, just so you know, because then we're going to break, uh, which is look up the, the website you want to look up that really gets into this in depth is world record or long distance photography. Look up some of those mm -hmm. websites where, and those are mainstream. I showed sites. that picture to my uncle, and yeah. he's like, "Oh well, he's like, oh well, this is like what they're always saying these these globers, or they're they're always just like, oh well, look how high up that he's taking a picture from, you know." Oh sure, but eventually but, but, it's a tougher argument because you're not shooting over water. For me, that's why I always reference water. That's I why say, I go okay, to water. Yeah, yeah always. go to the water. It's like, look, the lighthouse is sixty well, miles away. On. So. Well, one second. The bottom line here is if you had a, a strong enough camera, a lens, you could zoom to China. That's the bottom line here. Or, well, I mean, is that yeah, the bottom line? Yes, but there's a condition for that, which is you can do it, but there can't be any atmosphere. Because, remember, you're not right, breathing, right. Refraction you're just breathing stuff, oxygen. Yeah. You're breathing one part oxygen to four parts nitrogen, which is basically just a soup. And at about a couple hundred miles, you're going to, the visibility be so obscured, it doesn't matter anymore. It's like looking through a swimming pool. So, but yeah, if right. there was, if there was no atmosphere, you could look from California to Japan. I have no doubt. I mean, yeah. Because I keep hearing these people say that. I'm like, you can, you really can. You could. <laughs> you know, if, if, there sounds, was, you know? if there was no atmosphere, <laughs> but it, but the argument kind of loses ground then because it's like, well, how we can't take atmosphere out. So anyway, I got 30 seconds. Well, you, the next, oh, uh, what do you got? You got any any closing remarks? Hey, Mark, Mark. Um, what? Okay, so what do you say if someone says, "Oh, but well, it's going bobbing up and down with the waves." You know what I mean? So it's not really flat. Uh, there's a, look up a thing called Fata Morgana, F A T A M O R G A N A. It'll go into the whole distortion thing, and that is there's a all certain. All of it is perspective, isn't it? It's not just perspective. It's also some distortion that happens because of the water. Hey, music's going. I gotta let you guys go, but thank you, Beverly Hills. If you want to call back in later, you can. But I've got like six people deep already. Thanks so much, man. All right, talk to you later. All right, bye bye. Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 2 of 4. It's a call-in show. So we're going to take calls right now. Let's get right to it. How about um, how about this one? North Carolina. North Carolina, you're on the air with Strange World. What do you got? Do I care? Boy, I hope so. Hey, Mark. Hey. This is Mark from Greensboro, North Carolina calling. How are you? I'm doing good. Hey, I just had a great idea. I think I'll rent out some of my bedrooms for the uh, conference. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to get that nuts. 
Uh, I mean, there's quite a few hotels around that area. It's not like, honestly, in fact, um, Peanut Gallery was saying, oh, yeah, you should turn it into like, like Woodstock. You should name it like Flatstock. But I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we're quite there yet. But I'm curious to see where, uh, where people will be staying. Wouldn't surprise me if, if some people brought uh, RVs and stuff and, and uh, stayed in them. That'd be great fun. Um, I'm, I'm happy to find out that uh, uh, someone's going to do a big billboard down there for a few months. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a natural. I mean, it was great that we did one for the Eclipse in Salem, Oregon, which was, which was fun. But having one down there for the conference, that'll remind all the locals that, uh, that, that we have arrived. I got an important question for you. Sure. How much should a proper flat earth show make? <laughs> <laughs> you mean how much how much does it qualify how much do you have to make before you actually qualify as a shill? Well, I'm I'm pretty new to the show thing. Uh, in <laughs> fact somebody accused me online of being a flat earth shill for the first time in my life, so I take it as a badge of honor, but wow, that's impressive. I, I told the guy, I'm I, I, I'm not a show that I know of. At least I'm not on the payroll yet. <laughs> a a disinfor- there, Yeah, there's some people in the conspiracy world who have said, if so, those of you who don't know officially what the whole shill thing's about, is that flat Earth is actually a government-sponsored disinformation campaign to make other conspiracies and the conspiracy world at large look crazy. And I hate to break it to you, but conspiracy people have never <laughs> had that sticker not on them. I know it's a double negative, but you know what I'm saying? Like, look, if you're in a JFK or Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or Boston bombing, you're going to have a little bit of crazy on you. Now, while I will agree that flat earth is the epitome of, uh, you know, a far fringe, at least it was until recently. Uh, yeah, people, the shilling thing, I never really could could get because what, especially after time, I mean, I've been doing this for two years now. And what, what, what am I getting out of this exactly? Yeah, I got a book thing out of it. A lot of abuse. Yeah, I got a lot of abuse. But I, I mean, it's... It, I have never, I, in fact, I do the opposite. I do not slam other conspiracies. You guys want to look at other ones, hey, that's fine. As a matter of fact, once you get into right. the whole flat earth thing, you will be opened up to other conspiracies. So, yeah, the the shill thing has been thrown. And I, I hate the term, to be honest, because it, because it's too easily thrown around. In fact, a lot of people throw it around. They don't even know what it means. Uh, it's like, exactly. You better well, I, be- I, I do think that I am the only flat earth airline pilot on the internet and and so i don't take a whole lot of abuse because i don't do a lot of posting see i don't do any videos but i do i do comment quite a bit on people's videos especially when they're um you know aviation related videos which is a lot of great ones out there right now Mm -hmm. um but uh it's amazing how many people uh how many people uh, judge me and uh, tell me that I'm an idiot and all that, all that crap, yep. you know, because yep. they they fail to understand, they fail to see uh, the bigger picture. And, right. You know, a, a lot of people uh, tell me that my math is wrong and they use eight inches per mile and 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 that's a that's a formula for a slope. That's not a formula for a curve. Right. So there's a lot of a lot of people that you know don't have a, the right information out there, but. No, I think I'm the only one that's uh, – well, there's two two pilots out there that, that uh, do commenting and on the YouTube videos. One of them is uh, Wolfie. Uh, oh, yeah. He's yeah. active in the pilot. He's, yeah. he's a, a business corporate pilot flying a, a global express, I think he's flying. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't get him on board at all to, 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 to see um, nope. my point of view, which is really amazing, but – Mm-hmm. Um, anyhow, um, not to belabor that too much, I listened to your interview with the uh, Boston. Oh, the Boston Globe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm originally from uh, up in that neck of the woods, so I pay attention to what's going on there. And uh, I thought it was a pretty good uh, interview, really. Very yeah. Good. Yeah. We'll have to thank you. And we'll have to see what he prints. You know, some of the some of these guys sit on them. 
for a while. Like uh, the Houston Chronicle that Patri- you know that was we actually filmed them or Patricia filmed them down at her house in Houston. They haven't released the story yet. I was interviewed by CNN for the better part of an hour, and I didn't record it because I was in the car. I would have recorded it, but they've been sitting on They're it as well. It. Uh, you never know. I mean, they would be the first. I thought the Denver Post wasn't going to run it, and they yeah. ran it front front page. So, and that's how CNN yeah. found it. So we'll see. I, uh, you know, you could because you can sit on it. There's no there's no shelf life necessarily. They can, you know, it's not like it, it runs out. So they can um they can run it later. But I'm kind of curious. So we'll see if the Boston Globe runs it. Anyway, um, well, could, a, what... go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, no, I was going to say you got about a minute left because I unfortunately we're backed up at this point. Good. I'm going to I'm going to make use of it by uh, shouting out to that fella, Andy, and his friend then from Beverly Hills about this uh, distance formula, the eight inches per mile squared formula, Mm -hmm. because this is the one that um, I've always used and and have always known. And um, it works in computer aided design software. And I think where it stops becoming functional is beyond a 90-degree point on the curve. That's, that's about right. And I think, you know, for from, from my standpoint, I mean, life gets real crazy. If you're flying an airplane north to south, life gets real crazy a lot before you get to the equator, at, mm-hmm. you know, at that spot, because you would be heading 90 degrees no, nose down towards – well, not towards anything, towards right. the base, really. But but the pitch of the aircraft is going to be 90 degrees nose down. So um, anyhow, I think that it's instructive, though, that if it works for, you know, 8,000 miles, um, it's pretty damn good. It's a pretty damn good formula if it can work for 8,000 miles, you know, right. or, uh, what is a quarter of the way around uh, the world, 6,000 miles. So yeah. anyhow, that's my two cents on that. And that, you know, I'm sort of staking my reputation on that formula, by the way. Um, sure. I no, no, I like it. Make a lot of on I like it. I like the formula, too. But you got to remember, it's not our formula. In the end, you know, we're, we, we, we reference the formula only to disprove it. And it's like, yeah, you guys say the right. curve, it's this much. And I've had other people say, no, it's less, no, it's more. It's like, well, either way, we don't see any of it. If you if you factor in things like Fata Morgana and and all the other fun distortions, right. we don't see it. So, well, I'm not too worried. What I always what I always end up saying, anyhow, regardless of the math, if you don't get the math right, know this: it's yeah. in, it's aerodynamically impossible to fly an airliner around a sphere. That's that's the end of the discussion right there. So, whether whether the math is right or wrong, you just can't do it anyhow. Right. <laughs> so that's it. You know. All right. All right, man. Well, thank you for calling in, and I, look- uh, I should be here next week. I don't think I'm I'm doing anything special. So, um, till then. Well, I know you good- get rich and famous, and you're traveling all over. Doing oh, exactly. And- yeah, I trust trust me. I'd They're replace on your private jet. I placed the ostrich feathers on one of my servants' fans the other day, and it's amazing. <laughs> the markup on those are just horrendous. I was anyway. Uh, I will. I will. Ha- you have a good night. Okay. Well, good. I got to let you go. See you later. (laughs) Bye-bye. All right. So let's jump right into it. So how about Twin Cities? Maybe it's Minnesota. Hopefully it is. We'll see. Minnesota, you are on with Strange World right now. Hey, Mark. This is Wes from uh, Flat Earth News Talk. Wait for it. Uh, There we go. He's been holding Mark is holding... You've been holding that side for two weeks. Now you can relax. It's Wes from Flat Earth News. It's fantastic. <laughs> so glad that you called. Hey, anyhow, I did. I did get a. Uh, I got a article that I got from uh, the Peanut Gallery earlier tonight, and he was just wondering maybe you may have, may or may not have gotten it from him. I don't know. And it was about the uh, Soviet soldier who saved the Earth. Back in 1983, I believe it was. Really? Uh, they had, uh, yeah, they had on their radar that missiles were heading, and the guy did not send it up the line, mainly because he didn't believe it. And uh, good thing he didn't, because what happened was the satellites were receiving a reflection from the sun. 
That's the story they put out? Apparently. It's a terrible story. I thought that was good. No, it's good. And it reminds me, because remember, I can reference just about anything to a movie. It reminds me of the beginning of 1983's War Games with Matthew Broderick, before he was Ferris Bueller, yep. that they replaced all the humans with just straight-up um, technology so that that would not happen, so that the men would turn the keys. But it's much crap. So... Right, and they had, I guess this uh, man just passed away uh, at the age of 77. Oh, that guy was still alive. Yeah, he was, but he's not anymore. The, the Russian that saved the world. Yeah, nice. Right. Again, right. I've, got nothing, I've got nothing against the Russians. I, I didn't grow up in a household that believed that uh, better dead than red. But at the same time, uh, I, I go the other way, which is I don't believe Russia was ever our enemy. I think they've been our secret ally for a long, 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 long time uh, to where, yeah, so do I, so. again, look up the story of how the Russians stopped World War I from happening, uh, which and it stopped the Civil War, the American Civil War, from escalating into World War I. And I, 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 right. I firmly believe that story. I tell it whenever I can. I'm not going to tell it now because we have too many calls. Oh, by the way, I do have a quote from the peanut gallery. I think you'll probably enjoy this one. Uh, a bald spot is like a lie. The bigger it gets, the harder it is to cover up. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Just guy another left, a left to the side of the kidney. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah. We were just joking about that earlier in chat. Um, nice. But yeah, the let's see, I was going to jump on another quick subject. Uh and that was the uh, balloons and satellites and all that. Oh, yeah. Happened to watch a flat earther who put on some old footage from way back, uh, probably 1920 to 1930, something in there. Yeah. And kind of reminded me of August Picard and all these balloons, not just a few balloons, but like a few things. Wes, get out of the wind long. tunnel. Get out of the wind tunnel, Wes. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, there we go. Right, but there were Anyhow, balloons in the, the uh, 1930s that were, uh, reminded you of August Picard? It's, it's definitely CERN pushing all that wind over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, with the balloon launches and this this old footage uh, from the way back, probably 1938, somewhere in there, and all these balloons had a U.S. Army on it, and it wasn't just one or two. It was like 50 of them they were launching all at the same time, and they all had huge hardware attached to them, oh, yeah. which I believe that's kind of the spawn of the satellite. Yeah, I, I satellite today. Yeah, I mean, there's some great footage, and I can't remember who sent it to me, where they were launching that big sucker down. It was one of the NASA ones, and it was four tons. Four tons in the balloon. You would have thought the balloon would, would have been as big as a stadium, and it wasn't. But apparently, if you use hydrogen, which has a lot more lift, you can you can lift some amazing objects. In the balloon. Oh, and absolutely. That makes, absolutely. That makes sense because remember the old zeppelins from back in the day. You know, I mean, you know, if I had a time travel machine, that's what I'd buy. Back in the day, I'd buy myself a zeppelin, like the Hindenburg. That's what I want. That'd be cool. I mean, a smooth ride. You know, slow, you're not in a hurry to go anywhere. Of course, you know, you can't go into the jet stream or anything like that. And you have prob you have to avoid the weather at all costs. But during the summer months, I bet it'd be a blast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That would be really cool. Like here in Minnesota, we have, you know, we have the Goodly Year Blimp. And you can, you know, pay X amount of $100 and go up in that oh, yeah, every summer. Goodyear, yeah, if I keep forgetting the Goodyear Blimp is, is still in, in service today. I mean, it's a smaller version yep. of the Zeppelins, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't you mean the Goodrich blimp? Yeah, Goodrich. What yeah. did I say? Goodyear? <laughs> no, no, no. It is the Goodyear blimp, but that was one of their commercials because everybody kept confusing it where uh, that people, because Goodrich is also a brand and they thought that they had a blimp as well. It's like, no, Goodrich doesn't have a blimp. It's good. It's the Goodyear blimp. Right. Yeah. Well, that was about it. So, you know, take care. Hey. Oh, I, by the way, um, uh, the, the peanut gallery says, get out of the prison courtyard. It's too windy. Right. <laughs> I'm having my smoke, and I'm enjoying it. Nice. All right. All right. Get shivved. 
<laughs> See you, man. All right. That was Wes from Flat Earth News. And we still got about 10 minutes till the break. Let's pick up, ba, 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 let's pick up New York. Start spreading. Let's see if he picks up race. Start spreading the news. We're leaving today. I want to be a part of it. Come on. New York, New York. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that tomorrow. I'm gonna start doing that to more New York people. What's uh, what's going on out in New- out, out New York? Hey, how you doing, Mark? I'm doing well. Sorry, you oh, had to be you know, a- New York is great. Yeah. Yeah, no, the hold is good. Um, here I am. Uh, I do, Beverly Hills seems to be waking up over there. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah, they're actually I they're actually on hold right now. They called back. They're pretty persistent. I don't know what they're doing Excellent. out there, but uh, I have a funny feeling they're going to be haunting me most evening. <laughs> So what? What can uh, I? This do? is uh, Chris from. Uh, this is Chris from New York. Um, now, the, for the corporate pilots out there, now what I really would like to know, I'm, I'm, it's amazing that you guys, ha- you know, that you you have somebody in the call-ins with these corporate pilots. They can't. Is there any explanation about that pitch that they have to do constantly at 600 miles per hour, and they have to bring that level down? constantly with the with the diameter of the uh they of the say earth, which we all know is i i got gotcha. you they say it's done automatically and I, <laughs> I i'd be like okay that's fine you know the, i've heard this argument for a while now and it's like okay you can say that your computers are doing this automatically now but what about the 1960s or what about if somebody is flying their own cessna or i don't know let's go all the way back to world war ii you know, was it based on air pressure? How exactly? And even if it was, because remember, when you go back, when you go back in time, those adjustments are going to take longer, and eventually you're going to feel it. Where your your older pilots going to be like, yeah, we know we noticed the nose, you know, going down every once in a while, because, and people keep forgetting this. It's like eight inches per mile square doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're traveling at six hundred miles an hour, you're having to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're having to put, keep that nose down. And some people will say, the other side will say, well, gravity's pulling it down simultaneously. I'm going, okay. And there's a, it's like, it's like, yeah, but okay, you can't tell me it's perfectly balanced because either you're going to have to adjust it a little bit down or you're going to have to adjust it a little bit up all the time, depending on the, on the, on the type of aircraft. So yeah, you got a good point there. And that, and that's my point. I mean, there's no way that that, that aircraft is able to do that. Either with the giant scrubs have already been able to prove them, that there's absolutely no mechanical substance inside of there. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Now, uh, one other thing, I, I really enjoyed uh, you, Patricia and, and you out there um, with that. Oh, that, out in that was a great video, by the way. Well, thank you. Thank okay, you. that really was. I, I crank it in my car and try to wake people up with that, but still, you know, <laughs> here in New York, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, and, you know, the pick of the earth is people have to wake up about this because, you know, there was only, you know, here we are, flat earthers. There was only one pick taken at, in 2015, and the last one previous to that was in, in 1972. Exactly. You know, and the only, the way, you know, I mean, really, it's ridiculous. Yeah, 40, 43 years. That's it's one. Two, it's two generations. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute nonsense. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And I then did I heard a... about the Mandela. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. There's a little delay. No, 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 no go ahead. The, uh, oh, the Mandela. Okay, thing. no, there's a delay. Yeah. And then I heard about the Mandela effect with you. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I heard you say good wrench. And I was like, no, no, this is good year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I see I'm old enough. Well, I've got a heck of a memory for media. And I remember the old Goodrich commercials, which that was the joke when you wanted to make right, some look. Right. It's like, hey, look, it's the Goodrich blimp. And and people, because they remember Goodyear, they they think, oh, well, it's even though in their head they probably remember Goodyear, they they look anyway, because why wouldn't you? So yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know what, Mark? Thank you for taking my call. You're doing a great job, and oh, uh, I just want to wish everybody out there, you know, you know, flat Earth uh, all the way. 
Thanks. Well, I have a couple of shout outs to uh, what? Go ahead. Oh, yeah, have a Zulu one out there, you know, see how he's doing. I'm thinking about putting something here in Westchester County. All right, so if anybody out there in Westchester County wants to get in contact with me, uh, give me an email. Let me yeah, shoot, shoot, list your email real quick. Um, the, your all best. Right, one. Uh, all right, I'll give my, my main email C A C O N N E L L 101 at E at AOL.com. Cool. AOL, old school. I used to do, I used to be a forum, forum consultant for him. All right, man, you have a good night and uh, stay flat, okay? All right, you too. Mark, thank uh, you. Bye bye. All right, let's pick up uh, one more before the break. Beverly Hills will probably have to wait until after the break, but let's pick up Alhambra, California. Here we go. Alhambra, California. Hey, what's up, Mark? This is Josh, the Uber driver from California, bro. How's it going? Hey, it's the Flat Earth Uber driver who who decides he's going to indoctrinate people while... He picked, He drives them around. Yeah, and you know what? I've been uh, I've been sharing that time with uh, Candy and Mark every now and then. Yeah, <laughs> Lulu I, one. I saw that. They're fun, fun bunch, aren't they? Yeah, it's a real uh, it's a real interesting ride when all when all three of us are talking to the uh, the passenger. Quite interesting. <laughs> I bet. Uh, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the passengers, uh, I, we were talking about it yesterday, actually, one of the passengers really threw me for a loop when she mentioned, uh, them selling real estate on Mars through Groupon. Right. Yeah. That, well, I mean, you know, they've been, yeah, they've been doing that, that for a long time. I mean, they were, they've been selling stars for decades. As a matter of fact, I have an old... Um, printout from Pan Am, you know, when Pan Am was a uh, Pan America when they used to be an airline because they were the, the, at the top of their game when the moon program came out and they were selling pre rent. Well, they weren't selling, they were taking pre reservations for moon flights for civilians in 1969. And had they, they, you know, had the space program advanced to a certain point, I am sure they would have built people for it. Although in the sixties, it would have been pretty cheap by comparison. But, oh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Again, just another beat of that you're on a globe, which is, oh, yeah, you can, you you know, nobody's going to do it. Nobody's going to buy real estate on Mars. But the fact that you're thinking about it means that, oh, yeah, Mars is real. Therefore, the globe is real. Therefore, I'm in a heliocentric model. So it's, it's a good story. Of course. It, follow, it fits the model. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't surprise me in the slightest. It's you know just one notch below. There's a face on Not Mars, wrong. so exactly. It's just reiterating the fact that you're on a globe. Right. As a matter of fact, I took some screenshots of a Wendy's commercial because it struck me as funny that the Wendy's commercial was a spinning globe, <laughs> and across the screen it said impossibility. Don't, and I was don't... like, that's some interesting wording. Yeah, don't don't get me started. In the uh, mid or the early 2000s, I watched two corporations, big corporations, change their logos to something that had to do with the curvature of the earth. One was the UPS logo. And you guys can look this up if you want. I remember when the UPS logo for years and years and years was just a, like a simple brown package with string on it, you know, just, just, a, just a crosshairs of string on it, like, you know, a package wrapped up in twine. And then... In the mid 2000s, they changed it to a, the curvature of the Earth with a sun barely cresting over the the curvature, and the exact same logo happened only with different coloring. Happened to Visa. Visa used to be two intersecting uh, circles, and now it is the curvature of the Earth. It's it's amazing that both those companies, huge companies, did those at the same time. It was like a last gasp. So then, with that in mind, what do you think about what? Facebook did recently where, okay, the notification symbol yeah. used to be a globe and now it's a bell. Interesting. I'll have to take a look at that. Mm. 
I actually, I took some screenshots. I sent them to Patricia. I was asking her what she thought of it. Because I know you yeah. really don't do Facebook. Well, I don't do Facebook, and... but if you screenshot it, go ahead and let me know. Hey, we've got about 20 seconds before the music kicks in. What, what else you got? Anything or you want to shout out? All right. Well, just a shout out to, uh, well, the Sun and Moon group. I was on a hangout earlier uh, oh. with them. Uh, right. That was fun. There's some really good uh, shout out to uh, Candy, um, to you, bro. Good job. Uh, and to Zuma, New York. Cool. And all the guys from the meetup side here, man. Uh, right on, man. Oh. Hello, YouTube. Got, we're already going to break. I hope you're well. Spotlight. This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. This is part three of four. And uh, before I pick up, looks like Texas and then probably Beverly Hills, I want to make a quick correction. The peanut gallery pointed out to me that it, the old Visa logo was not two circles. That was MasterCard, the red and the orange circle. Visa was two bars, one above and one below, uh, gold and blue. So... I'm not that wrong, but you know what I mean. Either way, they changed the logo to the curvature of the Earth. So, take that. Uh, Flat Earth News, all I'm doing is going into YouTube and typing in Flat Earth, and I'm setting the filter to, well, in this case, one week. I, I should set it to two weeks because I was gone last week, but I wanted to just kind of look through and, and see what was going on. And... The, the quick thing I want to note was when you type in flat earth and you're not filtering by one week, you're sorting, sorting by an upload date. We broke 19 million today, which again is a new high, which is a new high that superseded all the other highs before this. Because remember, we weren't even at 1 million, not even close back at the beginning of 2015. And now we're at 19 million. So this thing just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until mainstream finally cracks. Speaking of mainstream, this is part of the flat earth news thing. There is a, um, uh, one of Kyrie Irving, because remember Kyrie Irving played with the Cleveland Caval Cavaliers with one of the greatest athletes in the world, LeBron James. And like all great dynasties, it fell apart. And so LeBron is going to another team and Kyrie is going to another team. Kyrie is going to the Boston Celtics. And I believe his new teammate, Jalen Brown, J-A-Y-L-E-N Brown, he was interviewed recently and he was asked about the flat earth thing. He doesn't think it's that crazy. And ESPN, 2 million subscribers, ran the story just a few hours ago. So check that out when you get a chance. Type in Jalen Brown, Flat Earth. You'll see all the variations of that. I don't, I'm not going to have to reproduce it on my channel because, well, I mean, to be honest, it's going to be all over the place anyway. But it's going to be in mainstream tonight and tomorrow morning. It'll generate a lot of buzz. And other than that, I'm trying to look at anything that really stuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a, um, a Dutch television program. And I don't know who's got the original, but it's subtitled. But there was a, a Dutch television sort of primetime show that they did over there. And they asked a small panel about Flat Earth. And it was brilliant. They didn't ridicule it. And everyone was kind of really open-minded about it. So you're going to have, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to listen to it unless you know Dutch. But you'll, the subtitles are great. So check that out when you get a chance. And let's see if there's anything else that catches my eye as I'm going down. There's just so much content out there. I mean, huge amount of content. 
more flat earth meetups. Uh, in fact, I've got to do one myself. I've got to, I, for those people, in fact, you know what, let me kill the flat earth news thing for a second here, because I got to mention for the guys that are waiting for me to do the promos for the flat earth meetups, I'm doing one for Pennsylvania. I believe it's Butler, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and there's one more I haven't done. North Carolina, Butler, Pennsylvania. Oh, crap. I think there was one more. Maybe I already did it. There was another one for Denver I did or Fort Collins. Anyway, so if you guys are interested, you're going to do a meetup in your area, just let me know. Get, send me the details and I will – oh, yeah, the Vancouver, B.C., one that I that I did recently, which I will not be attending. Unfortunately, I've got way too much stuff to do this time, but I, I will try to catch the next one if I get a chance. But if you guys want to do a meetup in your town, send me the details. I will create a template and put it up as fast as I can. OK, everyone got that? Good. Let's go back to the phones. Phone number. I'll give it out one more time, then I'll pick up this one from I believe it's Texas. The number to call in is either 213-233-3998 or 720-897-6111. Or if you just want to call in and listen and you don't want to worry about me picking you up, that is 641-793-7117. All right, let's do Texas, and then I'm going to see if I can get back to Beverly Hills. Texas 214 area code. What's going on? Hi, Mark. It's a little old flat earth model builder here. <laughs> hey. Chris hey, Chris. What's going on? Well, a lot. I'm staying up late here in my shop, busy building models seven days a week. Wow. So, how did, yeah, how, how did it go stuff. with um, when uh, the documentary uh, group left me and Patricia in Houston and headed up your way? Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. Daniel showed up on uh, Thursday. We had a great time. What a what a great guy. Yeah, Daniel's a, a great a, guy, and he's a dead ringer for yeah. <laughs> uh, I know, Ethan, right? What, Ethan, Ethan Hawk. Yeah. Uh, Ethan Hawk, I meant. Yeah. Yeah, he could be Ethan Hawk's brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a sharp guy too. He uh, he did a great job. Nice. And, uh, the most exciting part about it at all is I've been waiting for a long time to get a video of me riding my, my chopper that I built. And since he was here with a really good team, uh, I said, hey, let's just go out here in the street and get me a, a, a shot of riding that thing. So I'm, I'm waiting to get the video back from him because I've been <laughs> waiting a long time. To do it. Nice. Uh, that's, I just that's talked excellent. to Robbie. Uh, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I uh, we talked to Robbie tonight about the conference, mm -hmm. and uh, it looks like there was an empty booth space left. He said he had a lot of people contacting him about uh, renting out booth space, but he said, "Is it flat Earth related?" And they said, "Well, no." And he said, "Well, sorry, you can't. <laughs> it was flat Earth related. You can't get a booth there." So it looks like um, Corey, the, the table builder, is uh, got two spaces because apparently his tables are big. He needs a lot of room. And so he has one left. So we decided he's going to, because uh, with all the stuff I'm bringing, um, we're going to combine our spaces together, basically. So Wow. Uh, be that, is gonna, that is going to be a sight to see. Yeah. And uh, especially I, I discovered uh, these, well, I, I've tried these, these uh, dream color chase rainbow LED lights on, on the, my infinity lights. And, around some of the bases of the model, so it blows out of there. But I recently discovered that if I put one right around the bottom edge of the dome, uh, <laughs> it really makes the dome look spectacular. And you can put it on so many different patterns. So I get this visual of all these models uh, and everything around in, in the conference. And it's going to be uh, pretty, uh, pretty eye-catching with nice. all the different lights going on and everything. That's great. That's great. In fact, I was thinking that for the panels, if it, if it wasn't, um, if they weren't blinking too much, you should do some of your uh, little Earth is flat placards and put them. See if Robbie's willing to like put those in front of, like in the like in the front of the tables. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Oh, you're, uh, you're already you're already thinking along these lines, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a, a set up. I'll probably make a because the little models are kind of like cakes and yeah. uh, 
so I'm going to make a little showcase that they kind of stack up and so it doesn't take up much floor space and convince everything. And then some of the bigger ones, um, but it's going to be, I'll have a, 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 fortunately the models don't take up a, a lot of room so I can hopefully bring uh, a couple of dozen with me to the show. Cool. And, but, uh, it's, I'm just really getting excited about it more and more every day. Uh, there's an, another art show coming up in Denver. Uh, <laughs> he's trying to get him to do it in the middle of October, but he finally set the date on the 4th and 5th of November. And I said, oh, we can't all that's so close to the show. So yeah, that, that's you know, really drive close. up to Denver and come back. Yeah, to drive to Denver and come back and tell us, I'm going to have to go up to the show and then you know, probably hang around there an extra day you know, having fun with some people and then drive straight from there to Raleigh. <laughs> so do a, do a triangle from here to Dallas. All right. And, well, uh, we can, that'll, that'll be interesting. Yeah. It's a, I figured it almost a 4,000 mile road trip. So, Oh, well, well, well I used we'll to do five trips all the way up to Portland and back from Dallas all the time. So this is that's right. not that big a deal. Really? Well, we'll, we'll be waiting for you. Yeah, and uh, as you were mentioning earlier about meetups around places, and I've yet to hear of a meetup here in Dallas, the DFW area. I what eight eight million people here? Surely, there's Good quite point. a few. You, you know um, what? Let's yeah, I'll call it out right now. Anyone because you know I worked for Los Angeles. I said, hey, why is anyone doing anything in Los Angeles now? There's they're falling over themselves to do them. So. Anyone out in Dallas? Okay, look, we've done I, just about every major city has been spoken for, I think. Uh, so, although I don't think there's been one in Salt Lake, to be honest. And if anyone wants to do one in Dallas, let me know. You know, all you have to do is pick a restaurant, pick a venue. I mean, heck, Phoenix was doing it in the food court of a mall. So, if you want to do one, let me know, and I will do a trailer for you. Cool. And after after the uh, conference, uh, yeah, probably around the first of next year, I'm looking forward to maybe putting together an art show, a music art festival here cool. in Texas somewhere. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, the two years into making models. They've, they've come a long way. And yeah. uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting. I've got a few on my website now. and But looking at pictures of them, they they look so much better in person than they do oh, I know. photographs and videos. Same, same with me. I look horrible on film. And yet in person, I'm not that bad. Well, I've, I'm getting used to it. I've, you know, I've always kind of led a solitary life and then having these interviews and all. I'm starting to get used to it now. You know, <laughs> says, oh, I think you're, you're getting to be a celebrity. Go, no, no, please, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, you wait. But, uh, it'll, it'll be fun because... The models are eye-catching. People want to know who the creator is. So you may uh, you may develop a following before it's over. Yeah, we'll see. I'm just having fun with it. Cool. But anyway, it's nice talking to you, Mark. I'll let you get back to your callers. And i uh just looking forward to seeing you soon. And um, keep up the good work. And uh, I'll talk to you later. All right, man. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going to pick up Beverly as the peanut gallery. Yes, thank you for sending We Are All Mark Sargent, that wonderful graphic. We're literally, and now I have to say that DreamWorks is sending me cease and desist orders. Even though I look pink in that, it's just a pink version of Shrek. That's what's happening there. All right, I'm going to pick up Beverly Hills. We're gonna, I'll give Beverly Hills five more minutes, and then I will pick up New York, another New York, 845 area code. So give me a second. Beverly Hills, I know who this is. What's up, man? We're back. I figured, and I kept you hanging on long enough. <laughs> so you got, I give, I'll give you five minutes. What do you got? Uh, all right, all right. Hey, let me ask you a really question. A uh, quick question. Have you seen the video of the underwater, uh, what is it, underwater uh, lakes under yes. the ocean in Mexico? Like yeah. half a mile down. Yeah. What where in the hell? What? Yeah, that was one of the freakiest things you'll ever see where there's a it looks like if if you didn't know if you didn't know the context it looks like a like a dark colored lake and but you realize it's like that can't be cuz they're already underwater. So what is this dense field of water down there that they were saying right. that when they used the submersible they could not punch through it. 
They could not. Yeah, it, it bounced up. Yeah, bounced back. Yeah. I do not. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. What? Seen a gallery saying it's salt density, but I think it's. Yeah, I think They said they were living off methane gas, and they weren't. They weren't surviving off the sun's energy at all. They weren't using the sun's energy to live. Wow. I, I Could don't. Could that be the Bible's description? Is the Bible correct here? I mean, my goodness, they say the uh, the waters above and the, the waters, waters below. Above and the waters below. I there. Look, there's been a the the Christian is, the Christian community inside flat Earth is huge. I it's it's really really big. It, I mean, it has went, to be. Yeah, it. I went to you know a biblical debate down in at Atlanta, and it was really really big. I mean, they, they're, it's very serious because if you're a Bible literalist, you when you when you apply flat Earth to it, you can't get away from it. The only verse they got, the only verse the globalists have is that they'll throw at you is Isaiah forty twenty two, which is He who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and and Bible literalists are real quick to jump and say circle is not ball, it is not sphere, it is yeah, not yeah yeah exactly, it's a circle. misinterpretation. And yeah. so, I yeah, I mean, there's too many quotes. I mean, the the one that I throw at people because it's easy, and not just the Tower of Babel where that's going, or or, or the story of Joshua, yeah. but it's the cool. it's the quote that is on Werner von Braun, you know, the father of uh, NASA, right, the ex Nazi, right. the the quote that's on he, the, it's just a verse on his headstone which it says in all Psalms 19:1. I had to look it up, but the verse says. And uh, and he, I'm sorry. And the firmament shows his handiwork. That's that, that's Psalms 19:1. So why is then, uh, there? You go. I mean, <laughs> why is a rocket scientist reaching out from beyond the grave saying, "Oh yeah, by the way, it might be a closed system"? Why? Would oh, he that's do... right. On on his on his tomb. On his tomb. Yeah. You're talking about yeah. right, right, right. Uh, One more it's... thing, really quick. One sure. more thing, yeah. really. Quick. I mean, I right, you know I'm convinced. One more thing, because we only got you so long. Um. Have you seen that video of the center of the earth, the vortex? What in the world? You saw that, right? I've seen it. There's this vortex. I don't know if it's real. You mean the like one, the, the big hole in the ocean one? or It's like in the, set, or the supposed center, like I guess over, you know. North you Pole. Know, yeah, the North It it could be tied to one of the two stories. One of, of course is 1926 Admiral Byrd's mission where he flew up there in a really rickety plane and <laughs> supposedly went inside and did one of those journey to the center of the earth type things. But the more interesting story Did you see people, the video? I don't know if I've seen the video. Dude, there's a video out there. All right, all right. I, 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 I tell you what, email it to me when you get a chance. I get emailed a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, I think I would remember no, this that's, one. That's fine, absolutely. But, yeah. but the, the other shocking. story... It just shocked me. All right, well, how old is it? It's, it's well, been a while. You know, honestly... Honestly, it's, it's been it's been up there. I, I don't know. I looked at it maybe six months ago. I mean, all right, right. You know? find it, email it to me. I promise I will take a look. Uh, I will. Give I, you I my hope it's hey, up there. Hey, really hey Mark. <laughs> yeah. Hey Mark. Yes. Hey, it's Andy. Have you ever? Has there ever been anyone who's put forward like a stack theory? How our waters below could just be the next stack below us is waters above and. Oh sure. You know what I'm saying? Like our waters above could be some someone else's. A water well, below, and that's how the simulation, that's the kind of simulation we're in. Well, yeah, remember, remember that what we're breathing here. I've never heard of a stack theory, though. Well, I've heard of it, but it, it, yeah. It, You've heard of a stack theory? Look, it's not, not in those words. Think of it like this. The no, water, they ha- yeah, they have that in other religions. I've seen it. The waters above, oh, really? yeah, I, I, it's part of this is going to take too long. But let's put it this way. The waters that's above and the waters yeah. below is... It could be easy enough to explain because, yeah, I mean, there's lots of people that have said, is it possible that there's an entirely, uh, you know, much, much larger ocean that's above us that's just being protected by a barrier? In fact, Rob Skiba, when he drew up his model, he was saying, oh, by the way, the peanut gallery sent me that video you're talking about, and I will, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I've seen this, but I will take a look at that again. You saw that? <laughs> I, I, I have seen it. it. What do you think yeah, it is, have... Mark? What is that? What, if you've seen it, what do you think it is? Well, I don't think it's, uh, I've never I seen think it. it's... I don't know. it's a sketchy shot. It's a yeah, sketchy yeah, shot, it's okay? okay. It? <laughs> it's okay, but, it's, but it, it, it's not like I start waking up people in the middle of the night to, to show up people. Right, right, I'm sorry. right. 
hang on. The um the waters above waters above and the waters below. Rob Skiba, if you want to look up something interesting, he drew up a model where he said, you know, if you were going to make an enclosed system where we were on the flat part and then you had a dome, he goes, the ultimate safeguard would be to put to put it underwater, to put something underwater. That way, if if whoever the monkeys or whatever were down here, we figured out a way to get <laughs> out. You know, you crack the edge of this thing and that's it. That's your that's your ultimate safeguard where it's like, oh, well, they're just going to drown themselves anyway. So no worries. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great oh little security. Measure. So anyway, well, they talk about flooding through the actual, you know, the rift. They opened the rift and the water came through the, and it knocked you anybody. The Noah's the Noah's <laughs> flood story wasn't just rain because you couldn't you couldn't generate the rain has to come from somewhere at you had to have extra water. In fact, the um, the Noah movie that came out oh boy a couple of years ago with Russell Crowe right and Trevor Connolly I think or whoever else there was uh, there's other people this guy thing. knows everything about movies just uh, I try like well, but I mean when they opened <laughs> up the they, all of a sudden it was like the 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 water was coming down from uh, the skies and there was it had nothing to do with clouds you could tell the water was coming from somewhere else so it is, right. it's 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 just in concept but anyway I will watch really the video. Any light parting shots before I pick up New York? Okay, okay, one more, one more. Hold on. Let me ask you. Oh, you Do said, it quick. Oh, Andy told me you you think that the solar system's in the dome, or is it outside? Is that not the ocean outside, and you know the planets no, are these ocean I, objects? You don't. Uh, I believe all the planets and the stars are just one one part of a planetarium. That's it. Now, are they sitting? Could it be, be holographic projections sitting inside a fluid? Yeah, possibly. I mean, the cameras sure, are sure. appropriate in a certain way, but I believe no different than what we do in a planetarium, that the stars and the planets are just part of the projection system, and then the moon and the sun are their own projection system. You don't need to put a solar system out in the distance. You're, it's all going to be simulated so, anyway. Yeah, okay. So. Right, right. So, yeah, you believe it's it's actually projected the moon, moon like, like I was saying. Okay, but I great. Don't. Right. If I had a billion dollars to build a planetarium, how would you do it? You'd do it like we do it now, only you use some better tech. Uh, are we on a flat, like you think, a uh, infinite plane, or is it is it kind of this igloo model of one, two, three different places? Yes. You know, have you seen those old like maps that. and there's ways out? What is? As far as I don't like to use the word infinite, only because the mind cannot physically get it around that that word. Sure. But but do I think there's other uh, pockets besides ours? Yeah, you bet. You bet I do. But I think they're all domed in. Wow, that, that is awesome. Like us out. Because right. Let's face it, we're, you know, guys like you, you're dangerous. <laughs> all right. That is, it, that is unbelievable. I mean, it really is hard to fathom that. Isn't, I have heard people have gone to it. There's been notes that have been found. Uh, <laughs> they never uh, showed up. I know. I know. Anyway, hey, man, I hate to do this to you. If you want to call in during the fourth, the fourth segment, you can try. But I got to let you go for tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so we're, much. We're like we're, we're your unofficial guests of the. Of this <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye. See ya. All right. Let's jump right to it. Mark from New York. What's going on? Hello there. How are you this evening? <laughs> You've got such a deep voice. It kills me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I just. It, your last caller was awesome, man. And and I'm jealous. I feel like I should have had a three way and had somebody else on the line with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that was Beverly awesome. Beverly Hill? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, every once in a while that that'll happen. Cool. Usually what'll happen is uh, someone will be watching some videos and then they'll uh, they'll show them to their friends. It's like we gotta call this guy. And then they'll just put me on speakerphone. And I've I've That's taken those great. calls. I'm not even at the show. I've been uh, the the best one. I think I was talking to a group of like seven or eight people in a room, and it was tough to figure out who was who. It was it was difficult because <laughs> they were all you know they were Great. all so excited. They you know everybody imagine everybody's questions firing at once. I had no idea who, who was who was going to do what. So anyway, how are how are things? Awesome. Uh, not bad. Hanging hanging out on the back porch. It's gorgeous out. I could actually nice. see the stars. It's like 70 degrees. Very strange for September in New York, but it's I, beautiful. I was actually so, getting a 10 four days ago. Oh, really? And I'm up in Seattle, mind you, and I was getting a tan. What, what, nice. how's that happen? 
You know, you can you can people and say that climate change isn't happening. Oh no, I can assure you, my friends, it is happening. Yeah, there's I no way it's like they can in the middle of September in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I it mean, like, like summers out, later, lay out that long later. I was gonna die. It was that warm. Yeah, today was hot out. Yeah, for sure. I was not enjoying work. I, was, I mean, and. I was wearing shorts, but it was just like, I want to go home. It's hot. I didn't want to deal with it. Nice. Tag, I have a quote, actually, for your first caller. I, okay. I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Paralandria. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. I, I thought this yeah. was funny. Kathy. Of all God's creatures, there is only one that cannot be made the slave of the leash. That one is the cat. If man could be crossed with the cat, it would improve man, but would deteriorate the cat. <laughs> you know who that was? Oh. <laughs> Mark Twain. That Apparently, he was a cat lover. I did, I did not, not know. know that. I am a fan of yeah. Mark Twain, as you know. My favorite book of all time, which is one of his last unpublished works, which was called Mysterious Stranger. Yeah, he's uh, uh, that man is definitely deep. Yeah. I have no, a, he's I have a not just some... I have a quote oh, for no. you, and then, then I've got like 45 seconds until the break. Um, okay. The quote is from the peanut gallery. The important thing in science is not so much to obtain new facts as to discover new ways of thinking about them. And that's from William Lawrence Bragg. Nice. Nice. Yes. Uh, and I have a quick, since we only have a couple of seconds, I have a quick uh, one for him. Unknown okay. author. Okay. Knowledge is having the right answer. Intelligence is asking the right question. And the reason I, like I that. bring that up was because of that Kyrie interview where they were just insulting flat earthers ridic- relentlessly. And it's like, right. oh, man, we're not idiots. I have I've met maybe one, you know, I'm not even met. talked to maybe like one person who really was like, wow, that guy's dummy. But, yeah. you know, I mean, everybody's pretty level headed here. You know, I know, I, I, I know, just, and that's when they when the people show up to the conference, they're going to see the same thing, which is look, they're just normal people like you and me. They're not tinfoil yeah. hat wearing psychopaths. So it's going to be it's going to be a fun time. Ooh, that's the music. So hey, take it by oh, yeah. Mark. All right, hey, and everybody, if you can watch some more um, Rick and Morty. I've been seeing all kinds of hidden stuff in there. It's pretty interesting. Okay, okay. see you later. All right, man. All right, love you, man. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> this is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate, no hype, no fear. Real people, real radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. And I, I got to give the peanut gallery credit because he actually mentioned something that caught my eye during the break. He goes, now sing Joe Jackson like William Shatner sang Rocket Man. And I was thinking, I was going, you know what? That's actually not terrible because Shatner can make anything sound funny. And I don't think I could pull it off because you, you can't do it to music. Shatner only works if you're not using music. So I was pulling up the stepping out lyrics and you got you to remember Shatner would always kind of yell into the tricorder. It's like, you know, the, the open line, the mist across the window hides the lines, but nothing hides the colors of the lights that shine. Electricity. So fine. Look and dry your eyes. Spock. You know, that sort of thing. And it's not the greatest impression, but you know what I'm saying is that he could do that. And I don't think I'll do that again, but <laughs> it's funny thinking of Shatner actually doing song lyrics because he's still alive now. He's one of the few Star Trek cast members that are, that are still out there. Anyway, I did that for the peanut gallery. 
Okay, phone calls. Before, let's read out the phone. This is your last chance to call in. Don't be shy. I won't bite. And seriously, some people are like too embarrassed to be on air, and I, I totally get that. But you got to know by now if you listen to me. I don't criticize or, or come down on anybody. I don't care what you're calling in with. I'm usually pretty nice. Phone number to call in is 213-233-3998 or 720-897-6111. Or if you're calling from the UK, 44203-393-2871. I should learn how to do that in like a, a British accent, but I'm not going to do it right the second. First call. That was not a fantastic chat. <laughs> Sorry, I watch a lot of media, but I totally get there's some comedians that do some mean Shatners. Shatner's a great guy to do impersonations of, but you got to know Star Trek. You got to know the old Star Trek and how even when you were growing up watching it, how ridiculous some of his dialogue came off at. It was always this intense, you know, you almost you could almost hear, feel him crushing the tricorder. It's like, it's like, get me out of here. Spock. Anyway. Uh, let's pick up California 510 area code 510 area code. Are you a Star Trek fan? And if not, tell me why. Uh, I just wasn't a huge tracky, but I'm very familiar with the, the Star Trek series. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Not a, not a big deal. So, what, yeah. uh, what, what's going on? Oh uh, man, it's your boy from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, California, not to be conflu- confused yes, with <laughs> what's uh, what's what's happening out in Pittsburgh. Oh, not too much, man. But uh, just to, just for a technical uh, uh, clarification, mm-hmm. when I call, I actually do my bus route out here in the Silicon Valley. Oh, got it. Yeah, because your location yeah. is coming in yeah, yeah. as. Oakland Fruitvale or Fruitvale? Yeah, Oakland, California. Yeah, 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 Bay Area. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Town business out here. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, so I'm out here. Let's just say you, uh, your boy out here with all these techies. <laughs> right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, at this late in the game, at this late in the stage, you know, the more you in this, the more, at least for me personally, I can't speak for everybody else, but, you know, the more humble-minded you get in regards to dealing with people, right? Right. But I but I got to tell you, some of that humbleness left, man, uh, when it comes to uh, that boy, Max Kellerman, man. Uh, my brother, Mark, from New York, briefly mentioned it. I don't know if you caught it. Uh, I caught and left you a message. I know you're a very busy guy. But uh, yesterday, uh, 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 Stephen A. Smith had, uh, you know, uh, Kyrie to come on. And, you know, oh, right. The- right. I saw yeah. part of that. So, where they were trying to pull answers yeah. out, of, out of him, and they were not happy yeah. with the answers he was given. Yeah. yeah so today, they did, so did you see that? Did you catch the follow up for today? No. No. What happened? The follow up. Okay, the follow up today. We're not going to get into all the details of, uh, you know, the semantics or how they was trying to, you know, pick apart. But the boy Max, not one, not two, not three, but possibly five times, five or six times, flat Earth, like literally trying to insult the man intelligence as if, like, hey, yeah, he, it, yeah, the, the fact that the guy believes in flat Earth obviously can't be that much of an intelligent guy to the point that even Stephen A. Smith and Stephen A. Smith is definitely not a a flat earth uh, 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 component. Oh, no. But yeah. he said, he, yeah, but, but 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 what he did say, it's like, no, the brother is. He said, so what are you trying to say, that he's not intelligent? So Stephen A. came back and told me, said, he, no, he's an intelligent young man. I mean, what are you talking about? And, right. then, and I mean, I mean, he was, it was just, and, and, and Max has been going in on him for quite some time. And on that interview, you know, he, he let it, he let Max know, like, yeah, I really don't like your comments that you've been making about me. And he right. had one chance to sign in the in the in the in the in the uh the up in the community that if you into you know flat earth or conspiracy, uh he said a term that you gotta be in it in order to know what he's talking about. And he said, uh, trust me, no, I'm a, he said I'm very he said I'm, he said I'm very awake of things that's going on. But it was but it was real subtle. And if you're not in this, you wouldn't caught it. But yeah, man, you gotta check that out. All right, all right, I will I will check it out. Yeah. 
I had heard, I had, I I had seen some of the little posts that, yeah, that, that Max was, he was freaking losing it. I, I saw some of that, but I didn't, re- I didn't know all the details. So thank you for letting me know. Oh uh, uh, yeah. He flipped this wig, man. I'm sure, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I was, he, he may not know, but I, I'm a huge, I'm a huge sports guy. You know, I still play active basketball and, you know, keep myself fresh. And I listen to first take, you know, a Mike and Mike in the mornings on my way. And, you know, but uh, yeah, Max, yeah, I think I'm done with that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, it, it helps. It helps us in some ways because every time he says it, absolutely, absolutely. there's people who's gonna yeah. look it up. Whether it's good publicity or bad, man, it's all good. Absolutely, I most definitely agree with that. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, put my little ten cent in because uh, yeah, that's a. I mean, he yeah. It, I mean, just. It wasn't. It wasn't like a little slight dig. No, he wanted to. He wanted to polarize and say, "Yeah, if you believe in anything flat earth related, yeah, we need to question your mental state. And uh, if you're a ball player, yeah, stick to playing ball and so on and so forth. And yeah, so yeah, when you check it out, yeah, you'll find it quite fascinating. Nice, nice. All right, good. Okay. I, now, now, so now I get. I no, no, thank you. That's that's awesome. I'm gonna see if I can I can grab a copy of it and uh and chew it up a little bit and see what uh what i can what i can get out of it okay good stuff i've uh, been enjoying the show tonight man enjoy all the comments man you know uh it's just a beautiful thing I, I i know i mentioned it in passing i don't know uh, uh october it ain't nothing um uh, you know in stone but i got some vacation time in october and i'm gonna try to see if i can do a look because you know man meet up just like man meet at a park or something i'm gonna try to see about Putting one nice. because we got one in LA, but 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 all but you know uh, we got to distinguish the difference between LA and the Bay. You know, two parts of California. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over here, yeah, over here in the uh, Silicon, San Francisco, Oakland Bay area. You know, uh, uh, my boy uh, Marshawn Lynch turning it up right now. So yeah. I know, I know. I'm sad because I'm from Seattle. I was sad that he retired and then came out of retirement. Because it, for his hometown, it's like. But no, I'm happy for him. Yes, he does. He he's never looked better than than he is in silver and gold. I'm sorry, silver and silver and black. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. But uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, hold up the clock because I know they probably got some other ones. Uh, I got to look forward to checking in with you at a later day. Okay, man. You have a good rest of your night. All right, you do well. You do the same, Mark. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Oops. Uh, hang on, Mark, one second. I'm, I know I'm going to pick you up in one second, but I got to read a quote because Peanut Gallery sent it to me twice now, which is, science at bottom is really anti-intellectual. It always distrusts pure reason and demands the production of objective fact. And that's from H.L. Mencken. Mencken? Yeah. So are you there, Mark, from New York? Wow, it, that was an interesting quote. I'm sorry to call back and take up time. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, are you kidding? The Beverly Hills call, guys called back again, and they're on hold. So I, <laughs> I, I've got to figure out a ways not to, <laughs> to pick them up yet. <laughs> so I'm going to use you. What What do you got? Nice, nice. Well, I just wanted to chime in on the Star Trek thing because you, you asked Lafayne about Star Trek. Yeah. And I wanted to tell people, watch the Orville, Seth MacFarlane. Oh, it's you like hysterical. it? Hysterical. It's it's Star Trek meets Family Guy. It, it, yeah, it's awesome. It was, I thought I've, it was I've, hysterical. Yeah, Seth Seth MacFarlane. I just so you know, I still think it, he's one of those guys that, that has so much talent, and he wrote. If people say, "Well, you know, what's the funniest joke you ever heard?" And for me, it was that. And you probably heard me say it before, which is the. Um, uh, the line that he used on one of his lesser watch shows, which is American Dad, where the, a- show, the alien again, I love I love the depth of this, where an alien's living inside the house of a CIA agent and the alien who has a, who's using the voice of Paul Lind. If you remember Paul Lind from uh, Be- the uncle and bewitched. And of course, he was the secret center square, square. Center square mm-hmm. the cursed center square where all, everybody died. Anyone that was in that square. And then he, so Paul Lynn alien doing a stalker Channing joke where he, he, you come into the room and he's saying, no, I didn't know. I didn't know stalker Channing when she was 40. I said, I knew her in the forties. 
right? It, which, which again, because he's making he's making for every age. And just before the scene ends, he goes, "She was 50. So, like, she was fifty in the forties. So he just kept working his way back, and it's like, I get it. It's an old joke, but he just kept working his way back, and I was like, oh my god, do you know how few people would actually get that joke? It's like, fine, yeah, yeah, I get it. She Rizzo in Greece when she was like thirty-seven. Playing a playing a high school high school senior when she was thirty seven and I, yeah you know, but it was a stretch it was a fun movie nobody cared but he was gonna take that sort of dig and only he could have gotten away with that you know when you write your own show I was like wow that is that is yeah. something that is a whole layer I think of comedy he's brilliant the, you, you got to really pay attention listen to what he says and and I mean if you have that sense of humor that kind of sense of humor yeah yeah so yeah so I just wanted to call you. And, tell you watch that because it, it all I right it was all right very good. Uh, we'll it was check very, it out it's very funny i know it's, it's a new show start start it's like a total mimic of star trek like next generation oh well but, i mean it, as, to but me, as as I saw it, it's going okay so they turned galaxy quest into a series is what they did yes 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 galaxy yes. quest by yes. the way from the finest year in movies 1999 nice nice all right, man. Anything else? Awesome. All right, cool, cool. Uh, no, nah, that's about it. And I, and like I was saying before, Rick and Morty. I just watched a whole. I binge watched like three seasons. There's a lot of hidden shit in there too. I was like, ah, hey, listen, look at that, look at that. There's all kinds of conspiracy stuff that they, they just they just throw out there. You know, you're just paying attention to what they're saying. You're like, wait a minute, he just said, yeah, a lot, a lot of this stuff. That was another nice. entertaining one. All right, man. Well, All right, hey. cool. You have a good night. Thank you. Keep, get some keep sleep. up the good work. Uh, and I, I, uh, you, I love your Houston, Houston stuff. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, the Houston stuff was a lot of fun. And again, of course, it's always fun to hang out with uh, Patricia Steer. She is a, yeah. uh, a, <laughs> she is a, a, a joy to be with. I'm actually <laughs> required to so. say that. So anyway. Well, of course. Yeah, exactly. So I, it's, it's in my contract. I got to go. I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good night. All right. We're going to pick up. I'm not picking up Beverly Hills yet. I'm going to pick up North Dakota. You don't get a lot of North Dakotas. Oh, wait. I bet you this is somebody on the road. Let's find out. North Dakota, you were on with Strange World. Last segment. What do you got? Yeah, you remember. I did remember. <laughs> I was just thinking, wait, yeah. some, the, only, the only people that could call me from North Dakota have got to be in a truck driving. That's right. That's right. I happen to be cutting across the Midwest, probably driving right past Peanut Gallery. <laughs> I don't know where he is. No, no, no. He is in. Um, oh, he's in Oklahoma at the moment. Oh, Oklahoma. Okay. All right. Well, I'm a, a little bit north of that, and in Illinois. Ah, so, um, hey, I just wanted to let you know. If you, if you were talking about blimps earlier. You happened to see one in Akron, Ohio, earlier just today, and uh, a Goodyear blimp. Did you? And, yeah, yeah, oh, I was just hanging out. Like, I'm not sure if it was like a football game going on or. Uh, or yeah, going the on. Goodyear blimp during football season is always on the move, and usually they truck yep. it. I don't think they fly it from location to location. I think they deflate it, put it on a truck, and then inflate it when they get over to wherever it is. Well, I thought they had several of those things. I mean, I still don't think oh, California. Yeah, 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 they, 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 they do, but I still don't think that I. It's pretty sure because of the weather thing, they don't want to fly them from like. I don't know, Chicago oh, yeah. down yeah. to Cleveland, you know, because it, it's not that fast. It's pretty slow. Yeah. You could yeah. actually drive there okay, faster. Well, I, I just thought that was so funny. You started talking about blimps. I was like, oh, gosh, I just saw one today. I hadn't seen one in a long, long time. Synchronous. So, um, Still there? I wanted to say, well, uh, I have... And this has nothing to do with flat Earth, but there is a video out there. I don't know if you've caught it yet. Um, uh, it's old vintage footage of of a camp. Have you heard of Camp Century? I have not. Okay, this is very interesting. Go go to YouTube and just type in do the search for Camp Century, and there will come up this, this old army footage uh, film about Camp Century that was made in Greenland, of all places, where they carved out this camp. It's like a, it was going to be a city 
the Army City, and they put in there the first portable nuclear uh, nuclear uh, reactor uh, power plant. Reactor. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, they showed how they were you know, digging into the, the ice, and they had to find the perfect flat, of course, flat area where they could do that. Um, huh. But it's been kind of fascinating. And then, you know, it was like, well, why would the U.S. Army be doing something like this in Greenland? Um, they kind of insinuated somewhere in the, in, the, in the film that they were maybe, this was like during the war, so uh, they were going to want to tunnel towards Russia. But that doesn't make sense because if, if Russia and, and the United States are old, you know, allies, you know, secret allies, then why would they do this? So it, it just kind of raises a bunch of questions. I had never heard of this. This was not in history book. Peanut Gallery just yeah. sent it to me, so that's very interesting. Oh, I'll, I will, I will yeah, check it out. Yeah. Okay, great. And cool. um, okay, the other thing was uh, any. I, I haven't con- gone to your website, so I don't know where all the meetups are in Seattle. Is there anything coming up? You know, like. Soon or, uh, work, there, work there might be there might be time. something in October. I heard there might be something. In fact, if D Marble is listening or anybody that's doing it in Seattle, I'd like it to be in the north this time, if possible, somewhere because there's a there's a restaurant right down in Mukilteo uh, near Everett, which oh, I think would be I, which yeah. I think would be perfect for it because there were quite a few people that came down to this last one. This this last one that just happened recently was in Burien, and the one before that was downtown uh-huh. Seattle. Um, but there were quite a yeah. few people that came, that came from the north, so I'd like oh, wow. to like be fair to them, including me, and uh, because yeah. if it's if it's over there, heck, I could just catch a ferry and and just be there. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. But that, well, so if anyone's yeah, listening from the Seattle, if anyone wants to set it up, let me know. I will point you. There's a restaurant, literally um, a sports bar, right on the other uh, side of the ferry in Mukilteo, which I think would be fun. But it's just a suggestion. What about New York? Uh, New York's still working on their stuff. They did one in the tri-state area, but they uh, uh-huh. they haven't done they haven't done one yet uh, outside of that. Oh, too bad. I, I hope I was hoping that maybe in November we're going to be in November. Uh, here's the thing: I was, I have a, a cousin in Germany who's flying out to uh, New York City. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very he's very rich. He's very well connected in the music industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has you know both of the family are. are on that side of the pond, uh, my my uncle had created a music publishing company from the war, after oh. the war. So uh, he, he's inherited that, and uh, he's done very well. Um, so we're meeting up, well, I haven't seen him like in over 10 years, in New York City. Um, yeah. I am going to give him a map of the, uh, the Gleason map and a little bubble level, you know, the little level, so that when he's flying back over the trans, you know, across the ocean. Oh, there, right, right. I know what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be uh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to ask him, I because I can't do it myself, right? So I'm going to ask him, you know, just watch that thing, and I'm going to tell him about it. I'm sure he doesn't know anything about it. I don't know how many people in Germany know about Flat Earth, but it must be getting out there. Right. Um, so, we'll see how it goes. And right, that'll be fun. I'm going to order one of your books to go along with it. Yay! Oh. Yay! Yeah. I should plug. I should plug my book more during my show, but I try not you to hawk my lips. Eh, yeah. It's not. It's not me. Yeah, I'm my... order three actually. One for for myself, my daughter, and then for my cousin. So. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, in yeah. this case, I am going to hawk the book. Buy Flat Earth Clues on Amazon. Order multiple copies. <laughs> Great for the holidays. <laughs> Mess with your friends. Exactly. All right. I'm going to try to take yeah. one more call before I sign off this evening. Any shout outs before I send you off into the darkness of Illinois? Oh, no. Just have a wonderful time. Uh, everybody who's going to the conference, I wish we could be there, but we've got a holiday run to do for our company. And gotcha. uh, it's just not going to be anyway. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just, um, I, I bought a ticket, though, for the online streaming. So cool. I'll be, I'll be sitting that'll... In, the, in the driver's seat here and watching it. Right on. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. Hey, yeah. my pleasure. And have you a, have a you have a good night. Yes, you too. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Yep. 
All right, who's the last call of the evening going to be? Well, you guys can probably guess at this point because they won't stop calling. It's going to be Beverly Hills, California, unless somebody tries to save me in the next 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven. Eh, let's just pick them up. There we go. All right, Beverly Hills, you got the last call, and you got you got four minutes. <laughs> nice. Man, we, we, we can't get enough of this flat earth. Apparently not. That's all right. You guys are good. I, so, you know, I, I thought I, this I, was a flat Earth show. I hear everybody's not talking about flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should be on the show I do with Patricia on flat Earth and other hot potatoes. We can actually do entire shows and not talk about it. So what oh, uh, we th- really? we, oh yeah, we get <laughs> criticized for that all the time. So it's rough. Uh, what you always uh, have to do the Alex Jones? Say your question. All right, you're out. Oh, well, I, I, I try to be nice. so, so am I talking to two guys or you three guys? Nice. He's really nice. No, it's just me and, me and my friend Ross, Andy and Ross. Okay. Andy and Ross. All right. You know I got a quick question for you, really quick. How do you, I mean, you realize you're going up against the government with this whole thing. This is serious. I, I mean, come on. Aren't you afraid of your life? Do you see the CIA goons? They're listening in. I mean, what's going on? I know you've seen some guys. Tell us something. No. No, and that's what kind of worries me. It worries me that I don't see them more than if I did. Sort of like the the old saying, don't worry if your coach yells at you, worry if your coach doesn't yell at you. Which is, in this case, yeah, it's be, it, there. I've never had a, a car follow me. I've never had a weird email. I've never had any weird clicking sounds while I'm talking to anybody. And it is, oh, wait a minute, the peanut gallery is asking me something. Hang on one second. Uh, you have government, you have government people on your side. Yeah. Thank you. The, um, it is, it is, that's that's great. No, 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 no. It's, it's what I figured is, is that this thing is being let out for a certain reason. And I haven't been shy about saying this in the past. Really? God, yes. There's, there's no, it's so easy from a software standpoint to shut this thing down. If you wanted to think about this. Right, right. Any browser engine, if you type in the Earth is, the top of the list is probably going to be flat. Uh, and that should not be there. It should never, ever come up. Or the very least, if you're on YouTube, which is owned by Google, one of the biggest com- companies I in the know. world, then all you have to do is say, if you see flat or Earth or any combination of that in a video title, do not recommend it to anybody. And yet I That's get great people week, week after week, they tell me the same thing. They say, oh, yeah, I got into this because it was recommended to me on YouTube or show or it shows up. Well, in there, auto- are, there are censoring bills. There are censoring bills coming out a little bit quicker. Little bit, I mean, have you not, been seeing that? Not with us. They censor other stuff. Absolutely. They'll censor. If you try to go after like a fake shooting, they will censor the hell out of you now to where they right. – do is they say not recommended for they'll make sure that you will never get a nickel off of it they won't ban the video really yeah yeah and i've seen some interesting stuff very very recently where people are <laughs> automatically blacklisted it because once you're blacklisted it doesn't matter what video you make you could make a video literally about puppies and butterflies and it will you're 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 going to be blacklisted anyway because well, they it's say, from your IP. if you go on your same ip and account it's just exactly it's yeah they they, they account okay. might as well start another account because you're but, here's, you know, I can, I, but you're, you're you're going up against the fact that the moon we did not land on the moon i mean that, <laughs> I, know, I know technically this is like you know technically i'm going against the u.s government even though i live in the united states but at the same time i'm getting no pushback at all, and I haven't since this thing started, which makes me think that I think they're they're setting something up to either come clean or steer it in a certain direction, because that's right. what I would. Yeah, right. That's, that, that's what I would do. And if you're gonna do that, you're gonna yeah take some token shots, put Neil deGrasse Tyson on a comedy show, take a few little hit pieces yeah, here and there. Neil deGrasse Tyson, he should be ashamed of himself. Uh, I know. Oh, anyway, sorry. I, oh, sorry. we live on a pair of Earth. A pair. It's a pair. It is a pair. Anyway, hey, the show ends in like twenty seconds, so I gotta say goodbye to you guys. So we we gotta go. Okay. You you're not allowed to go. I gotta go. Hey hey, you know what? Look, <laughs> behind you. Look what's that? All right, I cut them off. So I just want to say real quick, if anybody wants tickets to the conference, 
email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and I will get you uh, I, will, I will put you in the right direction to get tickets there's only 7 general admission tickets left there's no more VIP seats uh, after that you're going to have to find somebody that's dumping their tickets because they had a family emergency thank you for everybody that called in thank you for everybody that emailed thank you to my wonderful friends out there and a special thank you to a friend in the northwest who is having a few potential health issues hope she's doing geocentric earth <laughs> I had to make a new one what are you doing <laughs> Dancing in the